On the sandy shores of the Florida Keys, sea turtles are laying their eggs, but a threat is looming for these gentle creatures. The Caribbean climate has become increasingly unpredictable as rising sea levels cripple the beaches where these turtles annually nest. They come back to their natal beaches. So animals that were born here are coming back to this very little spit of land in order to lay their own eggs. If the beach goes away, they may not be as flexible to use another beach. Dr. Kristen Hart and her team of researchers are working around the clock, tagging and tracking these turtles in an effort to protect their future. They're imperiled, they do need help, and we're trying to figure out you know, where the problems are. We are here on East Key in Dry Tortugas National Park. We are about 70 miles west of Key West, and we're in the Gulf of Mexico. There's seven islands. We are on one of the smallest, but one of the densest turtle nesting beaches. Some of them are right on top of each other, a foot away from each other. This is a almost completely marine park, and the turtles come up and grace us with their presence. It's pretty amazing to see these animals up close and, and personal with them, and we get, you know, right in there. And, Generally, sea turtles date back to the time of the dinosaurs, so it's 200 million years of evolution. Our study was the first to really concentrate on the dry tortugas turtles. Our goals are to try to determine patterns of movement and habitat use to figure out where they might go. points are either sightings or capture points. When we first started working here, we realized that we could dip net juvenile green turtles. I had done this in the Everglades, and out here, the water is much more clear. We can pursue them in the flats and, and shallower areas. She's coming up. The bigger turtles out here, we do what's called rodeo capture, or also turtle jumping. They're usually 10 or 15 feet down, but when they need to come get a breath, they're coming up to the surface, and so that's when the diver meets them down there. You basically get your hand sort of on the rear and right behind the head, and you get the animal pointed up. We got him. It's a team effort. Once we get them on board the boat, we'll do a standard workup, which includes measuring them, weighing them, taking blood samples, tissue samples. There's a lot of questions that we can ask, even just about how healthy they are, and how healthy then are the resources that they're using. We also fixed devices on them to track their movements. So we've used acoustic telemetry, radio telemetry, and then satellite tracking. So we're learning a lot about their movement paths and their, their areas of residence. They've been around the globe, but they're hardwired to come back to the very place where they were born to lay their own eggs. If an animal was born on East Key, She'll come back to East Key. She's not going to go use Loggerhead Key or one of the other keys here. We all take turns every 30 minutes walking around this beach in particular. It takes about 10 minutes to walk around. If they nest, we let them nest and mark off where the nest is, and then we work her up just like the same workup we would do with a little turtle. She's corralled in a box because they can be 400 pounds and they're very powerful. They'll do that about every two weeks during a season. And when we get recaptures, that's really exciting because you know the animal still survived wherever she went. In order for turtles to lay their eggs, the conditions have to be just right. Ideally, they'll encounter high tides, dark beaches, and warm sea surface temperatures. Otherwise, they'll do something called a false crawl in which a turtle will make their way onto the beach only to turn back around. We don't know really why they false crawl, but something isn't right. Maybe they're not feeling contractions. Maybe the conditions just aren't right at that spot. Maybe they dig and they hit a piece of a coral or a root or something like that. And false crawls could become more frequent. Rising sea levels reduce the amount of available beach space, and rising temperatures can drastically affect sand temperature. Studies show that cooler nest temperatures produce more males, while warmer nests generally produce females. 
with sea level rise and climate change, they're threatened. I think we're a little more concerned about their trajectory of their population because it's generally not good for the turtle. We've learned a lot about these dry tortugas turtles, and it really is valuable to me to, to know that they value the research that we're contributing. We're answering questions that are important that haven't been asked before. It's definitely demanding, but at the same time, I think it's one of the most rewarding things we could ever do. There aren't many people allowed on this little patch of land, so I feel very privileged to be able to, to play a role in you know, figuring these turtles out and being in this very special place. Mm -hmm.